Why am I the one that has to talk about conscience? I'm so bad at talking about conscience. The Christian idea of the conscience is a very powerful and very misunderstood idea. And when something is powerful and misunderstood, it has the potential to be very dangerous. There are a lot of technical definitions when you're talking about the philosophy of conscience and a lot of very important ideas, and for that you have to go to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Okay, there's four definitions that I need you to know for this video. Conscience, good and bad judgment, the different kinds of sin, and scandal. All right, definition of conscience. It enjoins him at the appropriate moment to do good and to avoid evil. It also judges particular choices, approving them that are good and denouncing those that are evil. Easy enough. All right, good and bad judgment. A human being must always obey the certain judgment of his conscience. If he were to deliberate to act against it, he would condemn himself. That, that means sin. Yet it can happen that moral conscience remain in ignorance and makes erroneous judgments. The different kinds of sin. We all know this. Moral sin, bad. Venial sin, bad, but not as bad. Grave matter is a bad action that you did, but it's not necessarily a sin. You have to know what you did, know what was wrong, and willingly have done it. Then it's a sin. Next, scandal. Scandal is an attitude or behavior which leads another to do evil, and it's a grave offense. All right, definitions done. Now, seeing as the conscience is the way we make our moral decisions in our day-to-day -day lives, it's very important that people are taught about it, properly form it, and like know the stuff of the conscience. So in my line of work, I'm constantly trying to figure out ways to teach about conscience. Lots of people want to teach about conscience in the context of a talk about Catholic sexual teaching. I think this is not a good idea. I think that politics is actually a really good time to talk about conscience, and I'll tell you why. In politics, people will take months of prepping, watching, thinking, reading, discussing, discerning every time that they plan on voting. Every time! The same cannot be said for every time someone wants to have sex. And if this process of discernment and thinking is already embedded in our culture, why not use that as a springboard to think about conscience? We culturally already understand the difficulty in trying to make these big decisions, these complex decisions that can have multiple ramifications for unexpected reasons and always have a moral implication to them. Culturally, we can more readily see doing the hard thing because it's the right thing or doing something that's best even though there is an element of evil in its vicinity. The primacy of conscience can be talked about a little bit easier in this situation. When you talk about sex, the primacy of conscience conversation usually boils down to, but I really want to. It's not good enough. So in these final weeks of the campaign, I encourage all of my fellow internet Catholics to post stuff about conscience, post stuff about forming your conscience, post things about how we use our conscience. It's going to be very important when we actually go into a voting booth. Then we can use what we learned and put them in other moral situations. Following the decisions of our conscience in the voting booth, even when it confuses other people, trains us for following our consciences in other situations. So before you get into another internet argument with fellow Catholics about this election, go home and do some reading about conscience, about scandal, about good decision, and about sin. This is part one in a three-part video about conscience and election. In the last video, I will tell you who I will be voting for. Protestant friend just texted me telling me how awesome that the Al Smith dinner is on TV right now. He literally said Catholic Church for the win!